Now tonight we start the bulletin from the Directorate of Criminal Investigations headquarters along Kiambu Road where the National Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Rotich has returned for the third time this week for interrogations in relation to the Kimware and Aro Dam scandal. It is alleged that some 21 billion shillings may have been lost in that scandal. Our reporter Duncan Haemba is at the DCI uh, headquarters and now joins us from there. Uh, Haemba, good evening. So Rotich's lawyer, Katwa Kagan, was there yesterday as well with him. And while he was there, he actually said they did not expect to go back to the DCI headquarters um, today. What could have changed? Good evening, Linda. That was uh, the communication from uh, uh, Katwa Kigen, uh, the lawyer to uh, Treasury CS. And of course, you'd understand where he was coming from by saying he did not expect that they'll be here again because they had spent long hours uh, for the past two days. But unfortunately, today is the third time they are here and this is the fourth time that the CS in charge of uh, Treasury has paid a date or a visit here at the DCI. Now, the information that we are getting is that um, whereas they had initially indicated that the CS has come to clarify or to make a clarification on a number of issues, the information we are getting is that he's recording another statement. He's making another round of uh, uh, recording statements which indicates that maybe uh, more information, he's giving more information, perhaps what he has gathered more or perhaps when he was called maybe the other issues that the DCI has been able to uh, establish and the reason why they've called him. So he's not here for clarification. We do understand he is recording more statements and that is the reason why since 4 p.m. it's now 9 of uh, five hours now he's doing he's yet to leave the gates behind me of the dca so what we gather is that uh, more information or more statements are being uh, recorded and you will remember that whatever he is recording he has been informed uh, that he's writing the statements under caution which means they might be used against him should need arise and uh, that one has been made clear to him the fact that he's recording fresh uh, statements we are yet to know what new information is coming to the fore linda listen he, the, the information that he's giving dci could be used against him is he being treated as a suspect as an accomplice or um, is the state considering using him as a witness I think that is what will uh, happen once he is in court, once he's arraigned, if at all it will reach that level. That is maybe what will come out after the DPP, but as of now, maybe being the man in charge of uh, the national pass, he's just giving information on how the money's in question, maybe was spent or not spent, paid or not paid. So for now, you cannot for sure tell what his position is in uh, all of uh, this matter, Linda. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned the money, Haim, but let's give our viewers uh, background. The back and forth on the amount involved, on one hand, DCI says it's 20 billion. Deputy President William Ruto says it's 7 billion. Raila Odinga also um, contributes to this conversation. Let's give some our viewers a little bit of background. Yes, there are conflicting reports on what exactly, what is the exact amount. Remember, the elephant in the room is the fact that uh, reports have uh, come out that uh, some monies were paid, whereas the works had not uh, started. And uh, the figures that we're talking about, the DCI is probing over 20 billion. Uh, the CS is said to have confirmed that is the amount under probe. The KVDA, Carrier Valley Development Authority, talks of 7.8 billion. The deputy president talks of 7 billion. Now, those conflicting figures maybe makes or uh, paints a picture as to why maybe the plot is thickening, if at all that plot is thickening, Linda. Mm. Let's talk about Aurora and Kimmerer and probably some of the reasons why uh, Henry Rotate, Treasury CS, could be in trouble. 
um, at some point we understand that his ministry ignored advice from the then Attorney General Gidon Wigai, who just asked the Treasury and indeed the air officials um, doing this whole project to do due diligence. Apparently that was not done. Um, we also have uh, information that NEMA was not consulted in all this. Um, compensation has not been given out to people. So let's look at the issues that could have led to the Treasury CS finding himself at the position where he is. Yes, Linda, among the issues that, they are being, that are being investigated is that aspect of uh, a critical or uh, a litany of uh, critical documents uh, said to be missing. One, the National Environment Management Authority Impact Assessment Report is said to be missing. A report on whether or not there was public participation is said to be missing. A report on due diligence is said to be missing. Uh, designs of the said dams, uh, designs and drawings are said to be missing. And that is the reason why, and then reports are coming out that uh, a section, a portion of money was uh, uh, paid. And of course, there are those reports that money left Kenya, went to Italy, found its way to London, then back to Nairobi. So those are some of the issues that are uh, uh, maybe they are making the CS uh, to spend more time here. Because once he clarifies as the man in charge of the national pass, then that is what we will expect uh, maybe to hear. And then from here, of course, Linda, you know that once the DCI will uh, feel that they've, they are they've satisfactorily gathered the information they have, they now forward the files to the DPP. Now it will be incumbent upon the DPP to go through if he agrees with the recommendations, uh, if he agrees with the file, whatever is contained in there, then he may recommend if there are prosecutions and the specific individuals that may be held to account on if at all there will be confirmation that uh, uh, monies have been lost or their form of uh, uh, the monies have been stolen. Uh, that is the case. So from here, the DCI, once they are done, they'll forward their files to the DPP. Now the next uh, step will be uh, what the DPP will do with the files that will land on his desk, Linda. Duncan Haimba, keep an eye on what's happening at the DCI headquarters for us. We do know that the CS is still um, with the DCI officials. Let's see how this plays.